Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Puddles Kern in the five minute pool on ICC. Puddles Kern is 2342, and he opens with knight f3 on move one. Let's play d5. So we're facing a German IM. Lots of games in the five minute pool, wow. 25,000 games played in the pool. That's dedication to online chess right there. <laughs> so let's see if we can maybe get into a classical Slav. They play e3, I'll play bishop f5. So usually the game goes knight c3 and then e6, but they're going to play a line with taking. Yeah, and then the queen comes out here to attack b7. This line is okay for black, but you got to be careful. I think you can play... Yeah, queen c7 is the move here. Defending the pawn. Check. And they give a check. Hmm. Knight c6. Or bishop d7. Let's go knight c6. I'm just being a little cautious because I, I know from experience that this line can uh, create some problems to the unprepared. Like here, bishop b4 is a move. Nope, they're just going to develop as normal. Okay, so I'll play bishop d6. And let's see if they start bringing about pressure on c6. So they go there. We can castle now. Uh, knight d7 is also playable. Maybe I should play knight d7. Knight d7, bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. Point being, I want to get in a quick c5 after they take on c6. And maybe I'll be able to illustrate that in the analysis. But you do have to worry about some positional aspects on the queen side once white takes on c6 and takes on d6 as well. This move might be overcautious, but I think it's all right. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the U.S. Uh, bishop takes c6. I can take with the pawn or the queen. Taking with the queen probably loses a pawn, so I should do this. Yeah, because if queen takes, bishop takes d6, queen takes, they had queen takes b7. Okay, so white's going to play for direct pressure against c6. Now, castle or take on b4. Take on b4, it's going to be hard to castle. So I'll do this. Let's pre-move this capture. So they persist in keeping the bishop on b4. Rook b8 now. Or take, probably rook b8. Rook b8, bishop takes d6, queen takes d6, and then I really want to push c5 thereafter. Okay, let's do that. Let's see where they move the queen. Okay, yeah, so this is kind of one of the scenarios that I was fearing where they can try to get the knight to b3 and then into c5. I don't know if I have to panic quite yet, but that is irritating. Okay, let's do this. And then my plan is going to be to put the other rook on b8 and try to restrain that knight when it comes to b3 by threatening b2 at all times. So threatening this pawn should that knight move away. My bishop controls b1, so I'm hoping that they can't put a rook there to kind of free themselves. We'll see if white can pose me any problems here. Maybe they can. h3, I like h6 as well, just to make sure the bishop can retreat back if ever they play knight h4. So white has frustrated my attempt to play c5, but on the whole, I think I'm going to have decent play here. Wow, that was surprising to me. So if I take pawn takes, move the queen, are they going to play knight d4 then? Is that the plan? I think I almost have to take the knight. So tick take, let's say queen e7, or maybe even queen d7 is more accurate, but let's say queen e7, that looks normal. Knight d4. I take b2, they take c6. Hmm. So that could influence where I want to put my queen, actually. Maybe even the f8 is the most accurate. Let's try. Huh. This move looks a little strange, but I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see. I'm just trying to stay out of the range of the knight, so if knight d4 to c6 happens, then I can avoid this. Yeah, so they're going to do that anyway. So if I take b2, they take c6. What then? This rook would be under attack. i got to move it somewhere like here. Okay, I think I have to go for this line. 
Otherwise, if they get a chance to play like B3 or something, I'm really not liking my position. They could try to go take and then take the pawn on A7, but I think that's pretty risky for them. I don't know if I would do that if I were white. So they're going to take the bishop instead. Yeah, that seems more sensible. And then grab here. And against that, I was thinking rook, B, rook to D2. And try to double up on the second rank. Let's do that. Probably rook d1 will be the answer. Maybe I still bring in the rook. Or possibly on rook d1, maybe queen b4 is good. They're going to play rook c2, okay. So take c2. Surrenders the second rank, but it might be best. Yeah, let's play for activity. Take, take, f5 is under attack though, isn't it? Hmm. Well, I'm going to do this anyways. I do think white has an edge now though. Queen c8 maybe? So attacking the queen and defending f5. White might have a little something here. I've got a nice lit pawn. It depends how weak that pawn is compared to this pawn. It's really going to be up to that. Okay, so they want to trade on their own circumstances. So take, take. Hmm. It's a little passive if I trade. So I'm going to come here and attack that weak pawn. Maybe I can induce them to play f4. Thinking about rook b6 on the next move, perhaps. Or maybe even g6. Queen down, okay. All right, so let's play for activity now. Ah, uh, rook c6. Rook c6, I have queen e8, fortunately. Check. They want the queen trade really bad. Interesting. So trade, trade, king h7, rook here. I take a2. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to agree to that trade. And they're going to go after the Check. f7 pawn, I think, is the whole purpose. Like, they're going to go rook c7 now. And I got to take here. Hmm. Let's bring our king up a little bit. Yeah, rook d5, or rook d7 rather, annoying. Concerned that I'm going to have a passive position, though. You can already see it's kind of passive at the moment. Um, let's get this off an attack square. Hmm. What to do? I think I might want to go back. King g6 looks like it was a mistake. And I'm inviting his king to come up. Okay, got a counterattack now, that's for sure. Hmm, f3 maybe? Hard to assess, I've got a lot of weak pawns. Maybe I can go after his f pawn, we'll try it. Attack that from behind. Hmm. Time warning. Oh boy. Um, let's let's take here. I'm just gonna try to win some pawns. <laughs> this is really tricky though. Rookie five. Rookie five might win. Check. He takes with the king. He's gonna come around. King d6 now. Hmm. Yeah, nice, nice technique by him. Got to resign. Yeah, that ending was not fun <laughs> after the queens got swapped. It's probably just a lot better for white right around here. I couldn't figure out how to defend it because I've got weak pawns on f7 and a7. So I suffered a little bit after knight takes f5 was played. I thought this would be okay for me because I have so many active heavy pieces, but I guess not. I played rook d2 and tried to double up. It's kind of amazing that white's able to put pressure here, but yeah, the weakness of d5 and also f5 comes to tell. That's weaker than the pawn on e5.
And I, I had a bad feeling after Rook A5 because you hate to play moves like that in a Rook ending. I'm so tied down, but I just didn't know what else to do. Because if I start running my A pawn, he'll win the D pawn. Maybe King G6, there's some improvement over that, but it's not looking good. F5 is under attack. Okay, let's go back and have a look. This is one line I gotta check up because it's potentially dangerous, but not many people play it. So after bishop f5, just the trade on d5, and then queen b3. So queen check. c7, check. Yep, and this happened. So uh, the positional sort of threat that I was worried about is what you saw in the game, where white tried to restrain c5. Knight d7 was just an effort to control the c5 square better. So in the event something like uh, let's say here instead of rook c1 taking happen, I can maybe sneak in c5 before it becomes a weakness. But as played, I never got a chance to do that. Castle, they played knight bd2. Let's start up the engine right here. I feel like my position should be fine, but I gotta be precise. Yeah, the engine says equal, so rook ab8 pinning, take, take, queen c3. And I played rook b6, so rook fc8 is a more direct way to do this. Threatening c5, so knight b3, and now just h6. And it's dead equal according to the engine, but white could certainly do something like they did in the game. Take, take. Oh, okay, so maybe one difference is like here, queen b4 is a bit easier to get in. So if they trade the queens, then I have this rook defending the c-pawn, as opposed to my rook on b6, which was defending the pawn laterally. That made things tougher. Yeah, that's a good point that the engine is making. Because as played right here, I played rook b6, and I might be suffering a bit after that, because it makes it hard to propose a queen trade without dropping the c6 pawn. I doubled. Yeah, I wanted to send both rooks to kind of restrict and tie down the b pawn. That would be the downside of playing rook fc8, but it's probably uh, more valuable to be able to play queen b4 if necessary. So white played h3, I played h6. Still, it's not a huge advantage, just kind of a nagging one for white. Now, the engine really doesn't like that move. Interesting. And I played the weird queen f8. So I didn't like this, though. If queen e7, knight d4, rook takes b2. I thought this was an issue. Oh, queen h4. Attacking f2. Yeah, I didn't consider that angle. That would have changed things, because I thought that I was losing material with the fork. But yeah, queen h4 is a good rejoinder. And since this would be checkmate, Check. checkmate. white cannot take the rook. So they'd have to play something passive in defense of f2, and then I could just move this rook probably. <laughs> it's funny, because this almost looks like a move that I overthought, queen f8. But in my mind, I saw a flaw with queen e7, even though that move is more natural, keeping the queen off the back rank. And I thought the flaw was knight d4 takes c6, but had this been like a, a bullet game, I probably would have played queen e7 without thinking, and I might have stumbled into that good continuation. <laughs> so here, knight d4, I took. The engine says it's still about equal. I felt kind of uncomfortable here, though. White had a little bit of a time edge. Rook here. Hmm, that's a mistake. Better is queen e7. So that if take, I suppose, I was thinking something like this and win, win the pawn back. But even better is rook d8, according to the engine. Preparing to double on the second rank. Okay. And black has good compensation for the pawn. Also possible is f4 to try to fracture their structure. Is that what the engine was saying? Take queen b4. Going after this. Again, f2 could be a target. So I played rook d2 instead, rook c2, take, take, queen c8. Yep, and white did a good job of keeping some slight pressure on. So now I could have traded queens, and in view of what happened, maybe this was the best idea. I just didn't want to go passive, because I saw here that, you know, let's say check. I check or something and then play here. It's going to be similar to the game. They're going to give a check, check and then go after these two pawns. And maybe I can hold this ending, maybe not, but... I was trying to avoid it because it looked pretty unappealing. So queen e6, white played a good move, queen c7, attacking my rook and also the pawn. I invaded. I missed that they could try rook c6. I wonder if Puddle's current even looked at that move. 
But after queen e8, I thought I would be okay. Seems the engine still much prefers white, though, a4. And I'm kind of tied down. My queen doesn't have a lot of good squares to go to. So white is clearly better. Check. So check. I took. And here king h7 was better. Yeah. In light of what happened, I can... I can sympathize with that. I wonder if that's because after the queen trade and then rook c6, I can actually play rook b6. Is that possible? I think so. White can trade rooks on b6, but that ending might be a draw. Hmm, let's see. So if take, take, rook c6, because this is the move I was worried about. Yeah, rook b6. Take, take, king f1. So white's going to try to shoot the king up here. King g6, king e2, king f7. Let's just say he keeps going. So I'm going to make it there in time, it seems. Yeah, because he can't go to the c4 square. That's crucial. So I get up there in time and probable draw. Although black, I think, is the one who has to be careful after something like a4. My king is slightly less well-positioned than white's. Hmm. Okay, so I should have let the exchange happen on e6. I was too worried about... Uh, that weak pawn that could potentially be there in this line. But I overlooked that rook b6 was possible. Because I think if I had to take on a2, this would be very much like the game. Speaking of which, after Check. take and take king here, rook c7, I took a2. Here, king g6, okay, maybe that move is fine, just defending the pawn on f5. Rook here. And this move is probably just horribly passive. As I described, I had a, a bad feeling in my stomach when I played that move, <laughs> rook a5, because always in rook endings, you should be striving for activity. And especially in a single rook ending, if you have to tie your rook to the defense of a pawn, that's usually a bad sign for your position. It's sometimes better to just give up a pawn. Uh, here I was hesitant to do that because I knew that white would have a 5 versus 3 majority on the king side, but... It honestly is probably my best chance. It's not an easy decision, but I think I should just get rid of the dead weight, let white take that pawn, and try to create counterplay. I had an ending like this against Greg Shahadi, actually, in uh, our, our match recently, where I had two extra pawns on one flank, and he had a rook pawn. And he made a draw. He defended pretty well. But usually this should be a win for the side with the, with the extra pawn, as white has here. Yeah, there might not be any recovering from rook a5. Now I've committed myself to passive defense, and white simply brings up their king. This move didn't do me any favors either. Yep, and I have to have the wherewithal here to just let go of that pawn, play like rook a4, rook a2, let white take it, and then push my a pawn and, and pray that I survive. But I played passive. Let's just see at the end here if there's anything. Here I did seize the chance to play rook a2. I think I have to, otherwise it's just going to gobble the f-pawn. Note that I can't play g6 because uh, that pawn is pinned to my king. So rook a2, white played this. They could have just ran the e-pawn, huh? Here, take, and then what king? Oh, king g3. I was thinking king e5, and I thought that I could play rook e2 and then take that e3-pawn and maybe have a chance at stopping this one. But yeah, king g3 is a pretty convincing reply. Then if I go here, well, I can play king f3, and I don't even get a chance to play this, and they're going to go here next. If I try to bring the rook around to the back rank, they always have rook d8 at the end. So that pawn will promote. So that was a win white had available. Instead, they did this. Rook g3. I was defending about as well as I knew how, but I think the position is just too far gone. I took the worthless h3 pawn, but probably should have pushed here. Does this change anything? I guess now the idea for black would be to uh, try to promote this pawn with check. Now that I've gained a few tempos to play the a pawn up the board, I'm getting ready to promote with check. But white could adjust to that. They wouldn't have to go for uh, rook to e5. Yeah, that's, that's my last chance. Play a5 versus what I did. Rook takes h3 and then Puddles Kern found the best way, which I can't stop anyways. Yeah, and King D6, very patient. So he knows that this pawn is going to promote. All he has to do is guard the queening square, make sure my king can't establish itself on E8. Uh, otherwise, if black was able to do that, I'd be winning with my outside pawn. But 
they made sure that didn't happen. So I resigned. Okay, so I might have been a little pessimistic about my chances out of the opening. I've just encountered this line before, and maybe one of the reasons I um, didn't like facing it in this game is because I would prefer to have white's position slightly here. <laughs> it looks fun to play white. They can kind of try to pressure black and like control the c5 break without much risk. But I think this game kind of shows that with accurate play, black should be fine. Uh, probably my trouble started when I played rook b6. I really dislike that move in retrospect. I should have played rook fc8. Rook b6, while doubling the rooks, deprived me of some important counterplay later on. Namely, uh, the lack of uh, the queen b4 move. I couldn't trade queens easily. So, Oh, and if I had noticed that point about queen e7, knight d4, rook takes b2, knight takes c6, queen h4, that might have changed the assessment of this ending as well. Anyways, good game, and hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.